Welcome viewer to Art History, where we continue to see the tools that we had started on. Now we'll get to the power tools that we have here, just for, demo, for, for knowing sick. Uh, we'll come to the demonstration of the machine much later. So I have a machine at hand that I'm holding. It's not a very common machine. It's a machine that is special in its way of operations. So we call it the uh, biscuit groover. Biscuit groover. Now biscuit groover will groove for the biscuit. The biscuit uh, will look like that, although it's wood. It's wooden. It's not the biscuit we know for chewing. Eh? Now uh, the biscuit is a is a is a is a. We use it for for making a joint, especially in a mitre joint, to strengthen it or to uh, to increase the surface area of the glue that we are going to use. So the biscuit groover has a blade in it. Once I press it like that, the blade will come out. So it will cut half of that shape that you see in the biscuit. Half of that shape will be cut from one side and the other half from the other side. And then we'll join them together. And I had cut a piece of that joint and I'm going to show you how the biscuit fits into so these are two pieces of wood which are bat jointed bat jointing means one just abats the other but now they are tightly held by the biscuit so inside here we have the biscuit uh, this one uh, mostly it is known as the lamello because it's the company that makes uh, these ones and the original uh, company that made that machine is branded as lamello so once you uh, put a groove on the side and the groove on the other side with the biscuit groover and you bring them together and fit them tightly you apply glue hold it together clamp it then your piece is strengthened and if it can hold without glue how much more then if it has glue so that is the use of that machine we call it the biscuit groover and these ones you buy them in a box from the suppliers uh, you prepare your pieces of wood then you use the machine to groove for the biscuits so it is the biscuit groover it has a cord it's a corded machine you fit it to power and then you use it now we move to the next machine which is very important it's, a, it's the last one in this session of the power tools that we have we call it the router machine the router machine has quite a number of operations uh, it can do molding molding it can uh, be used to to make holes you can recess for locks with it you can put some decorative molding using the router it has quite a number of operations so in our uh, in our other sessions where we will be demonstrating it we shall show the use of the router machine so the router machine will be fitted with a bit on this part so you open it fit a bit here and then tighten it then you will uh, use it to make whatever mold that you have. So this is a router machine and it is used for quite a number of activities. Right from putting mold, uh, recessing for whatever you want to recess and so many other activities as we shall see later. So with that, uh, and this is the fence, sorry. This is the fence for the router. Once you're working, on a piece of wood you want to have some uh, parallel line that the bit will flow or follow you fit the router the, the fence to the router then after fitting it you adjust it to where you want it to be and then tighten it with this wing screw with this wing screw you tighten it 
then you are able to use it. So this is the handle, you hold it, and then once it is uh, powered, then you can be able to use it. So that is the router fence, and this is the router machine. So in the workshop, you may require a box to carry some screws to carry these bits, because if you put them on the bench and then they are misplaced, you will have a problem. That is why we have molded this box, uh, or rather we have we have constructed this box with a handle on top of it so that you can put uh, screws, uh, assorted kind of screws. You can put the bit, the screwing tip, engineering bits, and every other kind of small uh, accessory that you would like to hold dearly when you are you're working. So apart from that, we have a can of glue here that we had, uh, w that we used in the workshop. So this uh, glue is known as a moisture curing polyurethane adhesive. So it is used in joining wood. Uh, an example in what I have just showed you. Uh, here we have fitted a lamello or a biscuit uh, in the midst of this, uh, or rather along the line inside there. So after gluing, you will not see it. So to fit it permanently, we apply glue and then we clamp it with the sash clamp that we, uh, that I previously showed you. So the glue is used to join the pieces of wood together. So this particular, uh, this particular glue is used even to work with wood, which is a bit, uh, uh, a bit not very, very dry. It is not, uh, it has not cured to the expected uh, level, but in joinery we recommend that we use cured timber. So this one will withstand those conditions where timber may not have completely cured or where you are using it there might be possibilities of moisture. Because the other, the other glues that we also use, uh, they are water based and once you introduce water again to the to the to the glued surface, then it will bring a problem in the glue compromising in its strength. So for now, <coughs> we have demonstrated the use of most of these tools, except this one. This one, we call it a bevel square or a sliding bevel. The sliding bevel will be used to mark angles which are not right angles. If you, are, you want to measure an angle that you are not very sure, or you want to transfer a bevel to another, uh, to another piece. So you use it, you trace the bevel, you can adjust it, you can adjust, adjust, adjust. Once you get this as the angle, you tighten it a bit and then transfer it to the other piece. Or you want to measure an angle other than 45 or, f or 90, then you will use the bevel square or the sliding bevel. So that is the use of this tool. It is uh, a very useful tool in carpentry and joinery. Now here we have another tool that I have not introduced. It's known as the RASP, R-A-S-P, RASP, or a wood file. It's used to, in the same purpose as, as, as the file that we know, but this one now is specifically for wood. So I'll do a little bit of the filing in this piece that we're using for demonstration. And then we see what happens to this edge once I file it. So I'll hold the file just like we hold the other files. And then I'll just file. Once I file, then it has removed the sharp edge. So for now, we have those uh, tools that we I wanted to introduce you to and these are just basic tools we we shall introduce others as we move on with the with our illustrations so thank you so much and keep tuned <laughs>